All right, I finally got enough beds to craft a pillow pickaxe. Just need to make a custom crafter like so. Now we have the custom crafter, place it down and craft up the pillow pickaxe. Hey, what's this? I wonder what a config file is. I wonder if I set the pillow pickaxe to zero, what happens? All right, let's just go to craft it. So pillow pick, whoa, pause. Oh, come on, the background should be blurred when we're paused. Okay, there we go. Anyway, you probably saw the title, but this is Minecraft, but I added config files to my data packs. These are simple configurable files that will be found in any of my data packs and will allow you to enable or disable certain aspects of the actual data pack. I'll explain how to use them in just a little bit, but first, Hit that like button. I have a very ambitious goal that we hit five likes on this video. Do you think we could hit five likes on the video? That would be awesome. Oh, and hit that subscribe button while you're at it. It really helps me out. Jumping right into this, one of the other big changes in this update was that the custom crafter is now an actual block. So you can see custom crafter can be placed as a block a lot like every other data packs crafters. And as I showed during my cheesy intro, you can see it now has a crafting recipe and it is made like such. So we have smooth stone on the bottom, cobblestone around and a crafting table in the middle. That gives us a knowledge book. We click on it and then we get a custom crafter. This change was made because I found that the drop crafting method that I used was causing some issues with compatibility with other people's data packs. And so I needed to switch to something that would work better for other packs. Oh, and cool thing about this change, now that we're not using a dropper, you don't need redstone to craft a custom crafter, meaning you gain access to all of the other stuff much quicker. And one other change, you can now make all of the other crafters in the regular crafting table. And you can see this is the sword crafter. You can use any type of uh, planks in the corners as well as put the swords on either side and it will all work out perfectly and we can get our sword crafter. And this applies to every other crafter that I've made. So there's like seven or eight other crafters that you can now craft in the custom crafter still or in the regular crafting table. Now onto the config file. So to get started, head to your data packs folder and find the actual data pack that we're going to be changing the config for. In this case, we'll do the uh, pickaxes and then we'll do swords a little bit later. And I guess I should grab the Bose data pack as well so that we can look at that one as well. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know how to get to your data packs folder, I have no clue how you installed these data packs. So I'll just assume that you know it. If you don't, check out the iCard in the top right. That will link you to an installation video telling you how to install my data packs. Okay, so starting with the camp pickaxes, we'll go uh, into the actual folder itself. And uh, realize you will need to extract these. They cannot be a .zip file for you to edit them. But we'll go into here, we'll go into the data folder. Your folder structure might look a little bit different. It probably won't have these two folders here, but go into the data folder, go into was.pick, then functions, and then there is the config file right here. We can open it. And now we have all of the settings of the data pack. All of my data packs should have a pretty similar setting uh, layout. So. We'll start with this line right here. This will enable or disable every recipe in the pack. So if we set this to zero, zero means that it's false and one means that it's true. So for zero, this means uh, recipes are set to false. So none of the recipes will be enabled. But if we set it to one, then some of the recipes will be enabled depending on the list here. So again, this is the master control pretty much. So we start by determining if any recipes are allowed. And then if they are, we determine which one. So do we want the miners pickaxe? If it's one, then we'll have the recipe enabled. If it's zero, then we will not have it enabled. And so uh, in, in my cheesy intro, I showed that the pillow pickaxe, when we set it to zero, the recipe got disabled. So that's how you would use this. So doing that again for the bows data pack, we can see if we go back through data, was bows, functions, and then config, we can see that this has a very similar structure. So we have recipes for all of the recipes again, but then here we have particles. And this is going to enable or disable whether particles show on the arrows as they fly through the air. So we can show that one off if we want to. Okay, so I grabbed some bows and you can see that when you shoot the firework bow, they has a, par a particle trail. And then same with like the TNT bow, it's like the flame there. The other ones as well do that, but um, I chose the, the firework and uh, TNT specifically because 
when we disable the particles, like so. So I set the value of particles to zero. I need to then save it and then go back to Minecraft and hit reload. And once it has reloaded, you can see that the arrows will fly through the air. They'll still do the effect when they land. So like the TNT is exploding, fireworks make a firework explosion, but there's no particle trial. And again, this would uh, occur for all of them. So like the honey and the ice and all of them are not gonna have a particle trial behind them. And again, of course we could enable or disable specific recipes or all of the recipes. I'm not gonna show that because I think it's pretty straightforward how that works. But of course, if you do need help, feel free to ask for help on my Discord. I'm sure that we will be able to link this video to you at the very least, and uh, we might uh, help you at least a little bit. Now, that's pretty much all I have for this video, but I do want to explain a little bit of why I decided to do this, because I actually already had settings, and those are uh, visible here. So I had little buttons you could click to open the settings. You can see none of them work anymore and that is because we're switching to this new config system. Now, if you recall how the old setting system worked, and I'll probably put a screenshot up on the screen right now, but essentially I had different click events. You could toggle them on and off in game and it worked pretty nicely. So objectively speaking, this is a little bit of a downgrade if you really think about it, right? However, functionally it works exactly the same, maybe not quite as easy to use, however, the amount of time that goes into developing it is significantly lower. It might surprise you to find out, but I actually would spend probably about five to 10 minutes per setting per item. And that might not sound like a ton of time, but when you're updating the data pack with five new items, there's 30 minutes of your time just gone, right? And those 30 minutes add up a lot, especially when you realize that I do not have that much free time. So, this is kind of just a necessary change where I can continue having the settings in the actual data pack that very few of you guys actually use while also not having to waste a ton of my time developing something that very few of you use. And if you're curious why I say very few of you use it, I stopped adding settings to most of my data packs like half a year ago. And I've had five people actually notice that I don't have settings for the newer items. So, I mean, most of you guys probably don't use this feature, but um, hopefully I've explained it as well as I can and it will be helpful to you if you are planning on using it. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for today's video. So if you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like on the video. Remember, we are trying to hit five likes. I know, very ambitious. Hit that subscribe button. We are very close to a thousand subscribers. No, 10,000 subscribers. And at 10,000 subs, I'm going to be doing a microwave reveal. Uh, yeah, I don't know why someone just wanted me to do a microwave reveal. I thought it would be kind of funny, so. And yeah, you can also support me on Patreon. That is linked down in the video's description if you want to financially support my work and the uh, effort that I put into my data packs. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys all in the very next video. Thanks so much for watching.